In our last episode, we finally discovered the name of the man who shot us in the head, Benny. Benny is the leader of the Chairman, a family that runs a casino called The Tops in New Vegas. He hired some great con mercenaries to intercept us and steal the platinum chip, but we still don't know for what reason. But we have some revenge that we need to spread on thick. And so after leaving Boulder City, we head north through the Mojave Wasteland to find New Vegas. New Vegas is surrounded by a slum called Freeside. Freeside is filled with crime, violence, prostitution, and drug abuse. As we enter from the southeast, we immediately find a drug dealer named Dixon peddling his wares. Looking for a fix, man? I got what you need. And then we find a drunk. People ask me how much it takes me to get drunk. Uh, I don't know. I usually can't remember numbers, let alone where I am the next morning. Freeside is not all bad, though. We do find a few interesting shops. This one is called Mick and Ralph's. We hear that they sell high-quality weapons, but the place has no law. And as we walk the streets, we get attacked by muggers. Come on! Freeside is an interesting area, and I've already done many videos dedicated to the points of interest along the way. The Van Graff's Weapon Shop, the King's School of Impersonation, and the Atomic Wrangler Hotel. But our mission is to head to New Vegas to find Benny. So bypassing all of this, we walk the streets towards the door of New Vegas. As we get close to the North Gate, a kindly old man named Old Ben gives us some sage advice. You look new to Freeside, so here's a little advice, friend. Don't go past the Southgate greeter without talking to it first. Why wouldn't I want to go past the greeter? Those bots are programmed to vaporize anyone who enters the fenced-in area without authorization from the greeter. And right on cue, a freeside thug makes a break for it. He races past the Securitron guards, but just as he reaches the gate... Unauthorized entry detected. Exterminate. The guards make quick work of him. If at any point we are interested in tempting fate, we can make our own run for it. Unauthorized We don't even survive the first bullet. Instead, to get into New Vegas, we need to talk to the Securitron gatekeeper. Submit to a credit check or present your passport before proceeding to the gate. Trespassers will be shot. A credit check? What's that for? Admission to the strip requires an official passport or proof that you are carrying the required minimum balance. These policies prevent less reputable persons from entering and ensure a good time will be had by all who enter the strip. 2,000 caps? I don't have that. Maybe I can bluff my way in. Uh, sure, I'll submit to the credit check. I'm sorry, but your balance does not meet the minimum balance. Alright, well if I don't have the cash, what can I do to get in? If you are unable to meet the minimum balance requirement, an official passport is an acceptable alternative. An official passport? But he doesn't tell us where we can get one. Now, if we have the caps, we can go ahead and hand them on over. Thank you, madam. You may proceed. Or, if we have a science skill of 80 or above, we can befuddle this guy. Uh, thank you, madam. You may proceed. But if neither of those are an option, we have to find a passport. This pushes us back into Freeside. Our best bet to find a passport is to talk with the local shop merchants. Heading back to Mick and Ralph's, we can have a chat with Ralph, who mans the general goods counter right up front. If you're looking for guns, talk to Mick. Otherwise, I've got a nice selection of general supplies. Hey, Ralph, do you offer any other services? I only offer services if the king gives the okay. Impress him and we can talk. 
Now, as we covered in my video on the King's School of Impersonation, there is a way to get a passport by doing quests for the King, but that's not the ideal way to get into New Vegas, as I mentioned in that video. So instead of getting a passport from the King, we can pass a 50 speech check here with Ralph to say, a resourceful fellow such as yourself must have something on the side. All right. Yeah, I've got a little side business going. What I'm about to share with you does not leave this room, eh? Over the years, I've gradually perfected my craft to the point of perfection. No one can distinguish between my work and the real thing. What I'm referring to is passports. If you've got the caps, I can whip up a strip passport which will fool even the most well-trained eye. Ah, now I see why you wanted to keep this low-key. Hey, if you're interested and have the caps, they go for 500. Any less and it ain't worth the risk of getting caught. What do you say, you game? We can put this off for now, or we can pay his fee up front, or we can pass a 50 barter check to say, no way your materials and expenses require that much. How about half? <laughs> I like your style, kid. But the best I can do is meet you halfway. 375 caps, and we can call it a deal. 375? Okay, I'll take one. There you go. With that, we get the counterfeit passport. It appears as some sort of electronic pass card in our inventory. With the passport in hand, we can head back to the gate and tell the Securitron gatekeeper that we have a passport. Thank you, madam. You may proceed. With that, we can finally open the main gate to New Vegas. Before we have a chance to take in the sights, we get approached by a familiar face. Howdy, partner. You've come for a piece, haven't you? Welcome to New Vegas. Victor! What are you doing here? Consider me your personal welcome wagon. Well, it seems like you pop up everywhere, Victor. Aw, oh, shucks, partner. I suppose it can't hurt to let you in on my little secret. Old Victor wouldn't be much use stuck inside just one Securitron. No, I can move from one to another with the snap of a finger. Pretty nice trick, ain't it? Just don't ask me how I do it, because I don't know. This place looks amazing. Where do I start? The place to get started is Lucky 38. See that big old tower shaped like a roulette spinner? That's where you find Mr. House, New Vegas' head honcho. And he's itching to make your acquaintance. Not now, Victor. I'm busy. Well, sure you are, Rambler. I know you're fixing to serve up some vengeance, but I'm gonna have to point you to the Lucky 38 first. Point me to the tops, Victor. I've got a score to settle. Sorry, Rambler. I know you're fixing to serve up some vengeance, but I'm gonna have to point you to the Lucky 38 first. With that, we begin the quest, The House Always Wins, Part 1. Look, no thanks, Victor. I can handle myself just fine. Bad idea, partner. That man you're chasing, he's a bad penny, all right. A rattlesnake of a man. Think of Mr. House's antivenom. Well, why is a robot passing on his invitation anyway? Well, now, it was Mr. House who made Securitrons like me. Seems the least I can do is pass on his message. Don't dawdle. He'll be waiting. Okay, well, you can tell Mr. House I might stop by. We'll see. Don't you dawdle, little doggy. Mr. House isn't someone you want to go about snubbing. All right, all right. I'll head there straight away. Yeah, partner. That's the spirit. He'll be waiting for you. With that, Victor rolls off, and we can now watch people enjoy the decadence of the strip. That's it, keep I moving. I barely see the street. Those last five shots were a bad idea. Have a nice day. Gonna have words with your commanding officer after this. Why do they call it a monorail? It's a train. A I have train. a mind to throw you on a cell and let you sweat it off. Hey there, friend. A bit of advice. You look like you could use some protection. Lucky for you, I got what you need. My stock and trade? All kinds of easy-to-hide weapons for slipping into and out of casinos. They won't give you a second glance. Jeez, this place is overwhelming. So many people to talk to. Uh, easy-to-hide weapons? Things guards can't spot when they're patting you down or checking for iron at your hip. Why would I need to hide a weapon on me? Simple. You can't bring guns into the casino, that's why. They'll strip you to your fists. Sure, they say you get it all back when you leave. Me? I don't like being without a little insurance when it's my caps on the table. 
We can pass a sneak check of 50 to say, I can get weapons past the guards, no problem. You might. One fella I knew was able to slip a pistol past the guards. You? I'm guessing you could get a machine gun by them. All right, let's see what you have. Take a look at these beauties. Mr. Holdout sells special types of weapons called holdout weapons. These weapons are so small and easy to miss that when casino guards pat us down and confiscate our weapons before we enter casinos, they miss these, allowing us to sneak them inside. There are a wide array of holdout weapons in the game, even beyond the list that Mr. Holdout can sell us here. There are even some unique items that are holdout weapons. Since we have murder and revenge on our minds, I think I'll go ahead and get a silenced 22 pistol for the task ahead. And now, for a tour of the strip. The first casino we find is Gamora. Outside Gamora, we find strippers, and the drunken NCR troopers walk past towards the monorail. I swear, the monorail was just ahead. Somewhere. Across the street from Gamora is the Lucky 38. This is where Victor told us to go and meet Mr. House. We need to stop and pee soon. Next up is The Tops, the headquarters of the chairman, the very place we need to go to find Benny. Down the street and to the left, we see the old Las Vegas Boulevard station. This is now a monorail station that connects Camp McCarran with the Strip. Next to this, on the same side of the street, is the Ultra Lux Casino, supposedly one of the ritziest casinos on the Strip, even if it reportedly harbors a dark secret. Across the street from the Ultra Lux is Vault 21, an old pre-war vault now turned into a hotel. Near to this is Michelangelo's workshop, this is where Mr. House gets all of the billboards designed and created that he uses around New Vegas. And across the street from Michelangelo's is the NCR Embassy. Mr. House was wise to make a treaty with the NCR instead of turning them into enemies. Now Mr. House still rules the Strip, and he can reap the rewards of all of the NCR's money. I'm really tempted to ignore this Mr. House guy and head on over to kill Benny. But Victor did say that Mr. House might be able to make our revenge a little bit sweeter. So postponing our confrontation for now, we can head on over to the Lucky 38. It towers above the strip. Heading on over, we see Victor manning the gate. Well, howdy, partner. Good to see you again. Boss is waiting for you upstairs, so get a move on. Will do. I'll head on up. With that, the gate to the Lucky 38 opens, much like the gate to Diamond City, and we can enter the casino floor. The place is dead. There's not a human soul to be found. The tables are all laid out. We find beer and ashtrays. The kitchen is stocked with food and drink. Cigarettes stacked high on a counter. And on the casino floor, we find slot machines, roulette tables, every modern gambling convenience. On the wall, we find a framed newspaper clipping. Winner, hottest tables in town, Lucky 38 Hotel, Las Vegas. Looks like Mr. House is quite proud of his hotel. Passing the change office, we can head up some stairs to the VIP lounge. Here we find a refrigerator and a hard-locked terminal. However, when we try to access it, the only option we have is to leave. Inside the refrigerator, we find a small selection of food. And on a shelf, at the very top, are some golden boxing gloves and a copy of Boxing Times. These boxing gloves have the same damage as regular boxing gloves with one damage, bringing the DPS up to 1.3. But they have a bonus of plus 50 fatigue, much better than the 35 fatigue that comes with the boxing gloves. Compared to boxing tape, it does a lot less damage. The boxing tape does four damage, but the boxing tape only deals 20 fatigue. When an enemy gets too much fatigue, he gets knocked out of the fight, giving the player the chance to heal on up or execute some criticals. On the wall nearby, we find more evidence that Mr. House is proud of his hotel. Grand opening, Lucky 38 Hotel, Las Vegas, Nevada. The other headlines are interesting too. Gamora Hotel still popular, and citizens worried about electricity shortages. Under the stairs on the ground floor, there's a door to the cashier office. Here we find a whole lot of empty gun cabinets and safes that are already open. None of this is set to own. We can loot to our heart's desire. We can walk away with bobby pins, bottle caps, a lot of pre-war money, even some chems. When done exploring, we can head to the elevator in the middle of the casino floor and talk to Victor. Where to, partner? At this point, we have one option, to head on up to the penthouse. Penthouse floor. 
When we arrive, we find ourselves on a platform near the top of the Lucky 38 Tower. Victor stands behind us. We see Securitron guards posted around. And directly before us is a Securitron named Jane. Well, hello, sugar. Mr. House is waiting for you in his office. Who are you, Jane? I'm Jane, one of Mr. House's girls. We keep him entertained. We don't get many guests lately. Perhaps we can entertain you as well. I'm curious about the other casinos run by the tribal families. Can you tell me more about the three families? They're just new money, sugar. They might pretend they're sophisticated, but between you and me, they're not far off from tribals. Emeritus especially are just awful brutes. The chairman and the White Glove Society at least pretend to have some culture. Tell me about the other casinos. Well, of course, there used to be a lot more of them. But these days, there are three open to the public. The Tops, the Ultra Lukes, and Gamora. And the Lucky 38, of course. But we're not open to the public. You're a special case, sugar. That's all really interesting, but you know what? I'm here to talk with Mr. House. Can you tell me more about the man? Why, sugar? He's the maximum utmost. If it weren't for Mr. House, we wouldn't have this fabulous wonderland of New Vegas, would we? I didn't realize robots could have such strong feelings about people. Sugar, I may be a robot on the outside, but on the inside, my neurocomputational matrix is an exact copy of Mr. House's favorite girl. Sounds like you're pretty fond of him. Well, of course I am, silly. Mr. House is just the smartest, most wonderful man there ever was. Why, did you know he single-handedly reclaimed New Vegas from all those nasty tribes that used to live here? Well, he single-handedly sent in his Securitrons to do it, but that counts in my book. So you're... a copy of a dead woman? What exactly do you do for Mr. House? Mr. House has a lot of needs, sugar. I take care of all of them, and a lady doesn't kiss and tell. I really didn't want to think about that. Then maybe you shouldn't pry into a lady's particulars, hmm? So what is this place? This is the Lucky 38 Resort and Casino, or it used to be. Mr. House has kept the place locked up tight for ages now. Nobody comes in or out. Now, while traveling the wasteland, I've heard rumor of a powerful, reclusive collector who is searching the wasteland for snow globes. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? Not many people know this, but Mr. House is one of the world's biggest collectors of antique snow globes. If you happen to find any out in the wasteland, you can bring them to me, and I'll add them to his collection. You'll get a reward, of course. In fact, one of Mr. House's favorites went missing when we moved the collection. If you have a look around the Lucky 38, you might even find it. All right, I'll keep my eyes open. Goodbye, Jane. Before we go down the stairs, we can explore this upper loft level. The Securitron guards are neutral. They have an intimidating presence, but they don't restrict our movement. Through a big wrecked curtain, we see a few novelty Protectrons. These are non-functional and appear to be models. We even see one sporting Nuka-Cola colors. Here we find a variety of clothing items. Another one of these open safes. It looks like a pre-war office, completely untouched by time. After exploring the loft area, we can head down the stairs. If we go to the northeast, we see a big dining table laid out with silverware and dishes for dinner. To the east is the kitchen, pots and pans strewn about, but no evidence that the ranges have been fired up in a very long time. This is a dead end, so turning around, we can head east, whereupon we find another named Securitron named Marilyn. But she has nothing to say at this point in the game. Though based on our knowledge of Mr. House's relationship with Jane, and remembering the gossip that Raoul shared with us when we acquired him as a companion, we quickly understand exactly why she's named Marilyn and what Mr. House likely uses her for. <laughs> Heading through the curtain, we find ourselves in a large vaulted room, and to the southeast we see a bank of monitors. In the middle is one large monitor, and on the monitor a face, the pre-war face of Mr. House. This meeting has been a long time coming, hasn't it? You've come a long ways, literally, and I suspect figuratively as well. I have to ask, now that you've reached your destination, what do you make of what you see? What the hell are you? A crude question, crudely asked. 
I'll be happy to satisfy your rambunctious curiosity at a more appropriate moment. But now, I'll repeat my question. What do you make of what you've seen? I've never seen anything like this place. Of course you haven't. Vegas always was one of a kind. What you see down on the Strip is just a fraction of the city's former glory, and yet, more than an echo, I preserved its spirit. Or perhaps you were referring to the Lucky 38? The years haven't been kind to her, but still she manages to impress. A city devoted to vice and sin. What's not to love? Oh, come now. Don't play the fool. Vegas has fools enough. A superfluity of them. They're what makes it so profitable. They come to Vegas chasing penny-ante dreams of high living to feel like they're big shots, like they're winners. You see that you and I are of a different stripe, don't you? We don't have to dream that we're important. We are. I prefer the wasteland, to be honest. You aren't going to ramble on about the virtues of life out in the wastes, are you? It's a desert, you do realize. A radioactive desert where humans subsist in a barbaric state. Difficult to glorify convincingly. They are, however, aptly named. For that's what you'd be out there, wasted. Here on the Strip, your talents can be put to use. So what's with the VIP treatment? I'm just a courier. Oh, don't be coy. You've been playing a high-stakes game ever since Victor dug you out of the ground. Don't be afraid to admit it. All right, House. Can we get down to business? Oh, by all means, yes. That's refreshing. The business is this. One of my employees has stolen an item of extraordinary value from me. And I want it recovered. Simple enough. What do you propose? My only concern is the recovery of the platinum chip. What happens to Benny, I leave to your discretion. When you bring the chip to me, I will pay you four times the delivery bonus stipulated in your contract. How's that? Thousand caps, huh? I have a few questions before I decide. What did you wish to know? Tell me about Benny. Benny has led the chairman ever since I recruited his tribe seven years ago. Until his recent misbehavior, I planned to make him my protege. Maybe if I'd begun grooming him sooner, none of this would have happened. What use would you have for a protege? To achieve my aims, I require a capable human agent to perform certain... tasks. I knew Benny was ambitious, even ruthless. But I believed he would do the job so long as he was incentivized appropriately. Obviously, I miscalculated his drive for supremacy. But in any case, you've come along. A more than suitable replacement. Why did Benny betray you? I have to think that he found out about the platinum chip and mistakenly convinced himself that he could use it to his own ends. One of the problems of a tribal workforce, I'm afraid. No intuitive understanding of how complex technologies can be. Why didn't you intervene sooner when Benny ambushed me? Why didn't Victor intervene sooner, you mean? Good Springs is a bit too far away for me to reliably control a Securitron agent by remote. I can send and receive packets of data at best. Victor's combat algorithms determine the proper course of action. Benny and his thugs were more than a match for a lone Securitron. When he alerted me, I instructed him to approach the site after Benny and the others had departed. So how do I get to Benny? It won't be easy. Benny is always surrounded by at least four bodyguards, except when he's in his private suite on the 13th floor of the tops. But the chairman are your employees. Don't they take your orders? It's more complicated than that. The chairmen share what you might call a tribal affinity. Look for a man named Swank, Benny's second in command. He's always been a reliable, if unimaginative, employee. Do your best to convince him that you're working under my auspices. If you have evidence of Benny's crimes, show it to him. Why can't you be the one to tell Swank? By contract, Securitrons are to enter the casinos only when invited by the three families or if other extraordinary circumstances arise. The moment I send one into the tops, Benny will know I'm on to him.
Say I want to take a diplomatic approach. If you were to approach Benny in public, you might be able to leverage his fear of exposure to make him agree to meet with you in private. Any ideas on how I could catch him off guard? Sneaking into Benny's suite on the 13th floor would be very difficult, but not impossible. There might be guards. Certainly there'd be a sturdy lock on his front door. Why don't you just send your robots into the tops to arrest Benny? Frontal assaults on casinos? Not good for business. In any case, Benny would see it coming, and all he'd have to do is hold the chip up and point a pistol at it. Our foremost advantage is that Benny doesn't know that I know he has the chip. Let's not squander it. Look, I have already suffered because of this thing and I need to know. What is the Platinum Chip? It's a very special item. There's nothing else like it in the entire world. It was lost a long time and difficult to find. That's all you need to know about it for this stage of our enterprise. Fulfill your contract, deliver the chip, and good things will come your way. If the chip's so valuable, why use a single courier to transport it? You realize you were just one of many couriers. The rest of them... dummies, so to speak? Add to that many thousands of caps worth of mercenary protection to screen your avenue of approach. Had I used an armed caravan to transport the chip, I might as well have been announcing to the world, This is important! Attack this! I didn't want to attract the attention of groups like the Great Khans or the Brotherhood of Steel. Alas, the real threat was closer to home. Look, House, you owe me an answer. I have a right to know. That's simply not true. I am the only person to hold any rights pertaining to the chip. I designed it, and I paid for it, dearly. To develop that chip, I spent a sum of U.S. dollars. Not the bottle caps that pass as currency these days, but a sum beyond counting. For decades, I paid salvagers to comb the ruins for it. And when it was finally discovered, tens of thousands of caps spent to have it brought here. We know how that turned out. Complete your contract, and it will be the last time I pay for the chip. Save your questions for then. We can pass a 50 speech check to say, the more I know about the chip, the easier I can find it. You might keep an eye out for any computers that Benny's been using. Maybe even a computer lab of some sort. Who exactly are you, Mr. House? I am Robert Edwin House. President, CEO, and sole proprietor of the New Vegas Strip. I oversaw the city's renovations starting from 2274 onward. The three families are my employees. Before the Great War of 2077, I was the founder, president, and CEO of Robco Industries, a vast computer and robotics corporation. You appear to be a computer, not a man. Don't let the video screens and computer terminals fool you. I'm flesh and blood, not silicon. How have you stayed alive all this time? Let's just say it was very... costly. But I was willing to make the sacrifices longevity entailed, financial and otherwise. We can pass a medicine check of 35 to say the lifespan you're claiming is impossible, except for ghouls and super mutants. I see you've made a study of the topic. My knowledge of the science of longevity would fill several textbooks. Perhaps after a decade or two of economic reconstruction, I can commercialize these technologies and offer them to others, such as yourself. How did you establish New Vegas? We can discuss this in greater detail at another time. Suffice it to say that when my Securitrons detected NCR scouts at Hoover Dam, I took action. I recruited a tribal force to supplement my Securitrons and renovated the Strip just in time to welcome the NCR as it marched into the region. Instead of war, a treaty was negotiated and the money started to pour in. Can you share with me your thoughts on the factions vying for New Vegas? It's understandable that you'd be curious about this topic, but we'll hold off until the Platinum Chip has been recovered. What else did you want to know? All right, what were your terms again? As I said before, Benny's fate is yours to decide. Once you've delivered the chip, I will pay you the amount agreed upon. 
Now we can either accept his thousand caps outright, or we can pass a 50 barter check to say, thousand caps? Well, that's a good start, but well below market price. Very well. Five times the bonus. Not one cap more. The chip is worth far more than that. My offer far exceeds the original terms of your contract, which, I will remind you, already obligates you to deliver the chip. Interesting that he's getting petulant at this stage. You'd think bottle caps wouldn't matter to a guy like House. After passing this check, we have to make a choice. To either agree to recover the chip, or to not. If we choose to recover the chip... Well enough. Return to me when you have the platinum chip in your possession. Any final matters for us to discuss? But if instead we say, I think I'll be leaving... You are the first person to step foot inside the Lucky 38 in over 200 years. It was not an invitation I made lightly. We have a serious matter to discuss concerning a contract you have yet to fulfill. I'm still not interested. I'll see myself out. You have an interest in this, whether you like it or not. You signed a contract to deliver the Platinum Chip to me. Now, I could stop you from leaving, but what would that accomplish? If you want to go, go. See what the strip I built, the strip I own, has to offer. Think about what I could offer you. I expect we'll have occasion to talk again. We can always come back to Mr. House at any time to agree to finally deliver the chip to him. But I'm just not ready yet. I'm obsessed with revenge. I don't want to think about politics and factions. Not until my business with the chairman is done. To the north, we see a wall-mounted terminal in a strange place. Hovering over the wall, we realize that this wall is a secret door. We can't pick it. Looks like we somehow have to gain access to this terminal to open it. I wonder what could be on the other side. When done exploring, we can head back to the elevator to talk to Victor. Congratulations, partner. The boss has instructed me to comp you to the high roller suite. You can bring your friends too. Be like a little clubhouse for the gang you put together. Just bear in mind, you're the only one gets to see the boss. Any friends you got, they can wait in the suite. Enjoy the digs, partner. They're plenty fancy. And with that, we gain access to our player home at the Lucky 38. I covered this player home and a bunch of user-made mods that make this player home much more convenient in another video, which you can watch here. After exploring our new player home, we can go back to Victor and check out the Cocktail Lounge. It looks like this is a revolving restaurant, at least if it's anything like the Space Needle in Seattle. This restaurant is on the other side of those big windows we see from the top of the tower when gazing at it from outside, but it looks like this restaurant has not served customers in over 200 years. We see a lot of cutlery, dishes, glasses, but not a whole lot of food and really nothing of value. Though we do find a copious amount of scotch and whiskey. Also, while exploring, we find something gleaming beneath a cash register. As we get close, we discover that this is a snow globe for the test site. You have found a limited edition Mojave landmark snow globe. These rare pre-war artifacts are widely considered to be useless baubles, but rumor has it some collectors will pay dearly for them. And this jogs our memory. Didn't Jane say something about Mr. House's collection? We can go back to our player home at the Lucky 38 where we find a big snow globe display stand. We can place the snow globe from our inventory here. Or we can take it up to the penthouse and offer it to Jane. I have a snow globe for Mr. House's collection. You do? Why, that's just wonderful. I'll take it and put it with the rest of the collection. He pays 2,000 caps for the snow globe, which incidentally is more than he's willing to pay for the platinum chip. <laughs> this guy's priorities are a little off. Well, we've turned the Lucky 38 inside out, let's head back to the Strip. As soon as we exit the casino, an NCR trooper approaches us. Hey, you there. I have a message for you. It's from Ambassador Crocker. Very important. Here you go. He hands us a note from Ambassador Crocker. Checking it out in our inventory, 
I wish to speak with you immediately in regards to important matters. I trust you have learned enough in your travels to know that the new California Republic is an honorable nation, engaged in a beneficent mission in the Mojave in general and New Vegas in particular. It is in addition a wealthy nation that well rewards persons who dedicate themselves to its national interests, whether for reasons patriotic or material. Allow me to reassure you that if you have committed any crimes or misdemeanors against the Republic, it is in my power to pardon misconduct of this sort. I stand ready to receive you at your earliest convenience in my offices at the New California Republic Embassy, at the south side of the Vegas Strip. God bless the New California Republic. Dennis Crocker, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary Department of State, New California Republic. It appears that simply emerging unscathed from the Lucky 38 Casino has attracted attention, first from the NCR and then by the locals of the Strip who stand in awe as we walk around. That one must be important around here. Check that out, she just left the Lucky 38. Damn, and she looks good to me too. Well, this letter has certainly given us something to think about, but I just can't deal with politics right now. I need to focus on Benny. In our next episode, we will at last enter the Topps Casino and confront the leader of the chairman, Benny. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook if you want to keep up to date with all Oxhorn news. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. I take Sundays off, which means I'm not going to have a video for you Monday. But never fear, I will be back to work Monday and I'll have a brand new video for you on Tuesday. So stay tuned until then. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you Tuesday morning, bright and early with a brand new video. Safe as kittens till you're ready to leave. Oh, and a friendly word of advice. If you happen to stumble across any weapons during your stay here, well, just don't wear them openly. You dig? Now that we got that little business out of the way, what can I do to make your tops experience the tops?